Three days a week or every other day, we'll be building muscular strength. That's what this video's about. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try it together. And don't be shy now. Remember, it's called lying. Marker. Great weather, especially when I'm like two miles from the beach. But anyways, talking about cold weather, um, warm-ups. So warm-ups for skateboarding. And it's funny, I go to different parts stuff like that, and I see some people try to stretch and get moving, and you know, they'll sit there in the cold and stuff like that. And what we call this holding, holding stretches are called static stretches. And static stress stretches are good for a post-workout, post-skate, something to do after. Whereas when you hold the stretch for a long time, it actually takes the elasticity out of the muscle. It doesn't allow the muscle to perform optimally. So before a workout, we have mobility and activation drills to warm up. So you'll go through a series of like stretches and exercises to go ahead and improve blood flow, improve tissue lengthening, improve tissue shortening, uh, get the nervous system awake and so on. But sitting here and just bending over and holding that position isn't really going to help you perform better. So today I'm gonna to run you through a series of exercises or drills to do before you skate and going through the list of exercises, you'll do it twice. Uh, that would be optimal. You could probably get away with doing it once, but we're gonna kind of go through and address all the components to open up the hips, even the shoulders, the back, and loosen that up. Uh, the hamstrings be a little bit more, more ready to move and lengthen, because I know a lot of skaters end up, you know, complaining about their hamstrings being tight. And just a little tip, if your hamstrings are tight, it's probably because they're weaker. So make sure you strengthen your hamstrings and you'll actually reduce the likelihood of having a lot of problems with the knees. Anyways, so we're gonna start off, we have lying knee pull, we have um, leg swings, we have a few different things going on, but we need to be able to allow the hips to open up. And try to get the hips open and mobile so you, your leg can flick out to the side so you're not tight squatting down are really critical. So first thing we're gonna start off with is a lying knee pull. You're just gonna do five on each side because like I said, you're gonna go through this list twice. You're gonna do five. So one leg out straight, one, two, three, four, five. When you do the pull, you should feel a little bit of a pull in you know, the front of the hip, maybe a little bit in the glute of the hamstring, and other side. Pop! Five. And then what you're gonna do from here is you're gonna sit up. I'm gonna face the camera for this one. You're gonna do swivel hips. So, because we have this big socket that the upper leg sits into to be able to move, we want to try to make sure that it's ready to move throughout the entire socket, so it's not jammed up in one side or anything like that. So this is a swivel hip. So you're gonna do ten of these, and the count's gonna go like one, two, three, four. But you'll do a total of ten, going back and forth and trying to keep your posture pointed straight while you move the lower half of your body as you go along. Then you're gonna go into standing leg swings, which you hold on to something. Um, I have this bag, luckily it's pretty stationary for a little bit of balance. So you have forward and try to get as much length out of it as possible. So the hamstring, then the front of the hip. You'll do about Eight, I think I put down um, other side. Oh, just let that sucker kick up. And then you go to the side, so you're just gonna have to all oh, kind of come here for this one. But get a base, stand on two, and then you go all the way out, all the way in. And it'd be easier if you're not holding on to something to move. I have with this bag. But the goal is to, like the swivel hips, to go through long range of motion, really opening it, it up. Pa! From there we go to, you know, try to loosen up the low back. We have one called cat cows. I like to use the Ace Ventura reference where he figures out Finkel and Einhorn are the same person. Einhorn is a man! Uh, uh, I I 
does a throw up, and he's like, oh, and he's heaving. So, cat cow, what you're going to do is you're going to arch the back, really try to exaggerate it, and then you're going to flex it and let the head go with the rest of the spine. Look up, look down, and the count, you're going to do five, and the count goes one, one, two, two, and then from here we go into kind of crawl position. Here, my hands are really beat up from, from, from falling, so I'm actually gonna go on my knuckles. But we're gonna go to a Spider-Man. So I'm gonna start in this position, and then from like a push-up position, I'm going to step forward toward my wrist and my ankle are in line, and then I'm gonna just turn, and then set it down, and I'm gonna go back. This one you're gonna do five on each side. So we're starting to open up the thorax, the thoracic rotation, which a lot of our rotation happens in the thoracic spine. So we need to be mobile and ready to move. And then going into what's called a side bridge. So kind of in that same crawl position, but rather than starting off long, I'm gonna be here. I'm going to step out and bridge open. Then same thing, step out, bridge open. I'll face the camera on this. So this is kind of like the sit out in the skate strength level one stuff, where we start in the crawl position, I kick the foot out, I'm going to bridge the hips high. This one I'm gonna reach as long as I can. You should feel the rib cage open up and stretch along that side. So we mobilize, we activate. When we run through a second time, we mobilize it a little bit more and then we reactivate. So we have our single leg glute bridge. Again, should look familiar, but push through the heel, pull the elbows in, push the hips as high as you can. And with the heel, it should feel like you're almost trying to pull it into you when it's the hips up, so the hamstring fires off. And you're just gonna do 12 to start off with. Good, and then all I'm gonna do is turn around. So that's one of my glutes and my hamstrings. I'm gonna get my quads warm, so then I have the Hindu squat. So kind of like from that crawl position, then I'm just gonna press the hips back and then come down. Press the hips back, come down. And I'm just going to do 15. Ah! And we have scat push up. So we have a regular push up we go through. A scat push up is just the shoulders moving, there's no elbow bend. And so I'm actually just taking the shoulders all the way back and then spreading them apart as far as I can. So it looks like this, which I'm going to still do on my knuckles because my hands squeeze the shoulder blades together. Push your shoulder blades all the way apart. Shoulders together. Push your shoulder blades all the way apart. Back and forth. And that's it's gonna be 10 repetitions. And then just arm swings, so side to side for 10. And it'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, like that, and then up and down. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, and then arm circles, eight forward, eight backwards. After that, then you just basically start at the top of the, the list again, knee pulls, swivel hips, so on. It doesn't take very long to do. First round only took me a couple minutes, and then boom, one, two, three, four, Five. You should notice the second time you go through it, everything's a little bit looser. Everything seems to be a little bit more responsive to everything you're doing. And I'm gonna actually try to go through the full series in a row without breaks or explanation so you guys can see everything. Boom, there's my 10.
And then my leg swings. Hope that it'll fall over. That's it. So it doesn't take very long to do to go through two rounds. In fact, it's a lot slow, a lot quicker than it did to take this to make this video. And so make sure you get through two rounds. Should be ready to go. Heart rate should be a little bit elevated, but you should feel warm, you should feel mobile, you should feel loose. Save the static stretching and touching your toes and stuff like that for after you skate. I'll make another video for specific stretches for skateboarders. But for now, this should get, get you guys prepared and ready to go. Thanks for watching. Make sure you click like and subscribe, all that stuff. You guys should know the drill by now.